is to control an entire arm or hand again. But before he can do that, researchers need to learn much more about how the limbs work. That's the job of computer scientist Michael Black. Using reflective markers and video cameras, he is capturing the motion of a hand and analyzing it in a computer. His goal is to learn how the brain controls the hand. To simply open a bottle, your hand uses all 15 joints in the fingers. But to black surprise, the brain doesn't control each joint individually. Instead, it seems to take shortcuts. For example, you can't move the joints of your fingers independently. The first and second joint of this index finger move in concert with each other. And what we're searching for is how all the fingers move together in a coordinated fashion to try and uncover the representation the brain might use to move the fingers in that way. If a limited number of commands from the brain can control hand movements, then it may be possible to discover how the brain controls limbs as well. In the future, a brain chip implanted at the base of the skull may transmit the brain's commands to a receiver further down the body, bypassing an injured spinal cord. The receiver then decodes the commands and sends them to the limbs. We're at the beginning of this age of neurotechnology and what I want to see is that we can have a physical repair of the nervous system. And what I mean is that someday you'll be sitting here interviewing someone and they'll be moving their hands, they'll be walking around, they'll be talking and they will tell you that I'm in fact spinal cord injured but I've been repaired by a brain gate chip in my motor areas that have reconnected my arms and my legs and I play sports, I, I live a normal life. In 50 years, Brain chips will allow trauma victims to manipulate their limbs, but one has gone further. He manipulated his records. Ha ha, my friend. Degas Alain, suspicion of manipulation confirmed. Cancel insurance coverage immediately. Confirm. Degas Alain, cancel insurance coverage immediately. Now when I let go of you, just think of walking. What are you thinking? What? Oh. Maybe I should come back in a few minutes. What's the problem? The results for your Euro tests before and after the accident don't match up. You manipulated them. I had a few drinks in mind before. I was just trying to keep my premiums down. And our personal care are refusing to pay a dime. You know what that means. And I. You're not insured. Monsieur Degas, I'm sorry. Treatments for those without premium insurance will be limited, but attempting to beat the system could be fatal. In 2057, a patient loses his insurance, loses an operation, and stands to lose his life. Oh no. But another patient's loss could prove his salvation. A patient with premium insurance has died, and now the doctor is taking a risky gamble. Sorry, Charlotte. It's after hours, and security is lax in the non-insured ward. Marie, what are you doing here? Everything we do from now on could cost me my job. I'm giving you the insurance tip of a first-class patient. What have you done? He was dead already. There's a way to adjust the machine so that he looks like he's still alive to central monitoring. Are you crazy? What are you going to do with the other guy? Paper, he'll die two days later. I'm going to build the heart to his chip and then operate on and Then operate on you as planned tomorrow. Then I'll switch the chips back. To insurance, it'll look like he died in surgery. What if you get caught? Go. 
The next morning, Alan arrives in the operating room. His custom printed heart is ready. Now, who have we got here? Jacques Martin, born 4595, 90 kilograms, platinum level. Heart transplant with engineered organ. Can you believe he's 62 years old? He's in good shape, Monsieur Jacques Martin. Concentration, please. Everyone ready? Patient hypertherm. During surgery, doctors won't have to touch the patient. Body temperature 46 degrees. Blood completely replaced with plasma solution. Instead, surgeons will manipulate a 3D model of the body. Stop. Computer rejecting data. Seems like we've got the wrong patient. There we go. Piece of junk. No kidding. These virtual images will revolutionize surgery in the next decades. With a click, doctors can switch from a scalpel to a saw. They open the thorax virtually while robotic arms perform the actual incisions. Are all the main arteries blocked? Yes, you can remove the organ. Fifty years ago, some scientists predicted that robots will push the human out of the operating room. Well, that may never happen because every patient is different. Robots cannot anticipate the unexpected. They cannot adjust to new operating strategies. So for you parents out there, hoping that your kids become doctors, keep on saving money for medical school. In the future, there will be surgeons in the operating room. And it's gonna be the human-machine partnership that will perform miracles in the hospital. Robotic surgery will soon transform how we operate on the body. Don't give up. The operating room of the future will be nothing like today's. And the change can't come too soon for doctors in Leipzig, Germany, who perform open heart surgery 3,000 times a year. They need specialized instruments for these risky operations. But today, their tools have reached their limits. The surgeon works with extreme precision, but for modern surgical techniques, that's not precise enough. When you're operating inside the patient with long instruments, you need to have millimeter, even sub-millimeter precision. That means we need to develop instruments which are an extension of the surgeon's hand inside the patient's body. Fifty years from now, most surgery will be robotic. In Leipzig, physicians are testing a robotic system that merges man and machine. Using a pig's heart, a surgeon practices a bypass. A control panel transmits his hand movements to these tiny instruments. The robot has three arms. Two perform the surgery, while the third holds two small cameras that provide stereoscopic images. The slim probes can reach where human hands cannot. The surgeon can view an image enlarged up to 30 times, so a large movement of his hands creates a much smaller movement by the robot. And a tremor filter keeps a patient from suffering the effects of a surgeon's shaky hands. In the future, robots wielding scalpels will be so precise they will perform surgery on individual cells. But even with ultra precision, things can still go wrong. If a doctor makes a mistake, the robot will too. What we need is a robot smart enough to know better. 
and Leipzig engineers are developing such a system. In brain surgery, for example, a doctor first outlines the part of the skull he needs to cut to reach the brain. Next, a camera and infrared sensors track the drill's precise position as it goes to work. Now, every millimeter is critical. Drilling too deep could damage delicate nerves. If the surgeon strays out of the marked area, the drill stops before damage is done. Think of it as an emergency break for doctors. But the ultimate in robotic surgery will be telesurgery on a patient hundreds or thousands of miles away, such as on a battlefield. A trauma pod will pick a wounded soldier up. A CT scanner will image the body. A doctor on another continent will be able to administer anesthesia. Then, guide a team of surgical robots to remove the metal fragment, cauterize the bleeding, and close the wound with surgical glue. The best surgeons will be able to treat people wherever help is needed. We assume that the surgeon will continue to play the most important role in the operating room. But robots and computers will support the surgeon so that he is more efficient. And operations will be possible, which we can't even imagine today. Alon's custom printed heart is now in his chest. We're running out of time. The fiber and glue will harden in five seconds. Fiber and glue solid. Okay. Unblock the main arteries. All open. Can I revascularize him? Yes. Inject his own blood. Quickly, please. Injecting. 2.5 liters per minute. Two channels. Seconds left. Come back. Blood pressure okay? I'll stabilize him. Please close the thorax. If I can afford all these high-tech treatments, I personally wouldn't mind living to be the ripe old age of 200 years to see beyond my years, to see the future of the human race. And how about you? Well, one thing we know for sure, hold on to your hats, because in the next 50 years, it's going to be a wild ride. A super digital wired world. Holographic companions. Personal robots. How will fully networked cities of the future change your world? 2057 continues next with the city. Want a taste of life in the city of the future? Or hear more from futurist Michio Kaku? Go to discovery.com slash 2057. Interact in the future zone.